Today we're going to talk about the Australian band The Vines. Rolling Stone magazine hailed the rock band as the saviors of rock and roll in 2002, while many in the British press claimed they were the best band to come out since Nirvana. But six years later, Enemy magazine issued an apology about how wrong they were about The Vines. But whatever happened to the band? Stay tuned for the full story. The Vines shocked the rock world in 2002 with their debut album, Highly Evolved. Along with bands like The Strokes, The White Stripes, and The Hives, they were hailed as the next generation of rock bands. The band's influences included a mix of British and American rock, including The Beatles, Oasis, Blur, The Kinks, and Nirvana. Even though the band wouldn't break big until 2002, their origins dated back to 1994 in Sydney, Australia. Frontman and guitarist Craig Nichols would grow up in a suburb of Sydney. He would drop out of school after the 10th grade and enrolled in art school, but he dropped out after a year and a half and started working in McDonald's. It was at that McDonald's he met Patrick Matthews, who also worked there, and they quickly bonded over their similar taste of music, including Pavement, Beck, and Nirvana. Soon enough, the pair would start a band with drummer David Olaf and started working on writing their own songs, while also doing live gigs where they covered Nirvana and a handful of other artists. Originally called Rishikesh, the band named themselves after the Indian city where the Beatles visited a local ashram in 1968. They originally started out as a trio, but the band grew frustrated of local newspapers misprinting their name, so they changed their name to The Vines, which paid homage to Nichols' father, who played in a different band named The Vines that was spelled with a Y instead of an I. The band would head into the studio to record a demo for a few hundred dollars. Nichols would tell Rolling Stone when he heard the demo, he quit his job at McDonald's. The Vines would be discovered in the winter of 1999 when two of their future managers, Andy Kelly and Andy Cassell, saw them playing a show at a tiny Sydney pub to a group of about 20 people. The managers took the band's demo and shopped it to different labels and producers, with it coming across LA producer Rob Schnaff, who had previously worked with Beck and Foo Fighters. He was so excited at what he heard, he told the LA Times he simply sent an email to the band's representative, repeating the name of the band over and over again. By the summer of 2001, the band found themselves in Los Angeles in the studio with Schnaff. The sessions though were tense, as Nichols was very protective of his music, and Schnaff had to show the frontman that he was there to help and not dilute their sound. It was around this time that Enemy Magazine featured The Vines listing their song Factory as a single of the week in November of 2001. It was also around this time that Nichols had a chance encounter with the president of Capitol Records, Andy Slater. Slater was so surprised by Nichols' persona that he made it a point to listen to the band's music. And it was shortly after that he signed the band to a worldwide distribution deal. Without even having released their first album or video, the band made MTV2's list of 22 artists to watch in 2002, while at the same time Enemy Magazine hailed them as 2002's new batch of artists. Original drummer David Olaf would leave the group complaining about internal pressures within the band and was quickly replaced by Hamish Rosser, while Nichols' childhood friend Ryan Griffith joined the group as the band's second guitarist. The Vines played their first ever headlining show in February of 2002 at a small bar in Sydney, an excited crowd would pack the venue, and Enemy Magazine stated at the time about the gig, this band or the future of rock. In 10 years time, 10,000 people would claim to have been at that gig. While many in the press championed the band, they also had their detractors. Some in the press dismissed the Vines, and more specifically Nichols, as a Kurt Cobain wannabe, and criticized the band's music for being too retro and uncommercial to catch on with the masses. Even Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl was quoted as telling Spin Magazine in 2003, Avril Lavigne's song Skater Boy is more challenging than Get Free. The Vines would release their debut album Highly Evolved in July of 2002, and it would peak at number 11 on the Billboard album charts and would be certified gold. The album was hailed as a throwback to garage rock, and their single Get Free would be the big hit off the album peaking at number 13 on the mainstream rock charts. But as the band hit the road, frontman and guitarist Craig Nichols' behavior became volatile and unpredictable. Plenty of interviews done around this time showed clear examples of that. Journalists who interviewed the frontman discussed having to walk on eggshells with Nichols, resulting in awkward exchanges. An editor with Enemy recalled one incident in which Nichols was so excited that a DJ at a New York nightclub put on a Supergrass song that he doused himself with a bucket of water, got kicked out of the club, then decided to run into traffic before jumping into a garbage can and trying to scale a building. 
According to the editor, this all happened within 60 seconds. Meanwhile, in other interviews, Nichols claimed to have liked spending more time in the studio than on the road. And Rolling Stone would report on the band in a 2002 piece, claiming, Spending time alone with him feels like babysitting my three-year-old nephew. I'm on guard, vigilant, watching to see that he doesn't hit his head on anything. It was during the promotional cycle for the band's first record that they made one of the most infamous appearances on David Letterman's Late Night Show. Some described it as a complete meltdown, while others in the press labeled it as, I quote, a sign of stress and mental exhaustion. The band was set to perform on Jay Leno's Tonight Show, but they were kicked off the set during rehearsals when Nichols trashed the group's equipment hours before taping. It would take several years and a series of dangerous incidents before Nichols would be diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome, which according to the Yale Developmental Disabilities Clinic, is a form of high-functioning autism characterized by deficits in social interaction and unusual responses to the environment. According to the Vine's manager who talked to the LA Times, the guy who diagnosed Craig said his life consisted pretty much of the worst things you could do for someone in his condition. Being in a different place every day, meeting new people, just having everything be totally unstructured, things went downhill very quickly, he'd say. The prospect of whether the band would even tour in the future was up in the air given Craig's diagnosis. The band's manager, Alex Kelly, told the UK newspaper The Observer, The thing we said to them a few months ago is, if they play live again, they pretty much have to be the best live band in the world. I don't mean that flippantly. If they perform disastrously, it would be horrible for them, for everyone around them. But if they were to tour again, I worry that it's going to be back to how it was. It's down to us and his family and the band to keep a lid on everything so he doesn't just go back to the way he was before. The band would still play tours, but they'd be much shorter in length and more sporadic. 2004 saw the band release their second album, Winning Days, which peaked at number 22 on the Billboard charts in America. The album didn't even go gold and sold a fraction of what their debut album did. The same year, Nasus Patrick Matthews left the band during a concert in which he walked off stage after having a disagreement with Nichols. Two years later, in 2006, the band would release Vision Valley, which would sell even fewer copies than their previous records. It would result in the band being dropped by their label Capitol Records, they would be picked up by Aussie label Ivy League, who would put out their next record in 2008, Melodia. In 2012, it came out that Nichols was the only remaining member of the group, as longtime members Hamish Rosser and Ryan Griffiths quit the group, with Rosser telling the music website Faster Louder, Part of the reason for falling out with Craig is that I've always enjoyed playing in more than one band at any given time, and this was always an issue with Craig. Nichols would continue playing music under the Vines moniker. In 2014, the band would raise money from Pledge Music to produce a double album called Wicked Nature. And in 2018, Rosser and Griffiths would temporarily return to the lineup. In addition to Matthews marking the first time the band performed with that lineup in almost 14 years, joining the band Jet at the same gig. The same year, the band would release their latest album, Miracle Land, with the same lineup that recorded their previous record. The last couple of years have been pretty quiet in the Vines camp. With everything going on, I don't expect there to be any noise anytime soon. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.